okay so uh, this is the uh, base topology that we'll be using in our class so we have uh, deployed or we will be deploying from scratch i'll show you how to uh, do the installation of ftd how to install this uh, appliance called as fmc in evng and how you can you know, lab it up on your own uh, laptop or own device right using evng platform you can practice all those uh, concepts that i'm teaching here right so it's very simple so i have got a you know firewall this can be called as sometimes as sensors as well so i can refer this as a term with sensor sometimes as gateway or basically this is my firewall and this ftd is normally called as a next generation firewall because it has got all those you know intrusion prevention system features right along with your basic firewall features it can do layer three layer four inspection of your packet not only that it can inspect your application protocols and uh, the signatures of those application protocols to determine whether it's going to be a uh, valid packet entering or leaving the network or not okay so we'll discuss all those stuff down the line but this is my base topology so it's like i've got a single ftd which has got a network pointing outside i mean connecting to a zone called as outside zone called as dmz and zone called inside dmz stands for demilitarized zone where you normally keep your company server so think like this is i've got a you know a router behind it and behind this router i have got some company servers sitting in this 10 dot subnet Likewise, in inside, I've got a inside router behind which I've got some inside multiple subnets, multiple you know, users, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll discuss regarding this particular topology scenario going down the line. But before we uh, dive into this topology and before we understand you know, how to uh, in, you know, implement FTD uh, on EVE and how to you know, initialize this FTD appliance and FMC appliances, how to set up the topology and uh, practice all the you know, respective concepts. Before that, let's understand, you know, uh, the overview of you know ftd right so from where ftd have come up and uh, what's the overall reasons behind it so let's discuss that first Sorry. so let's talk about in you know, a little bit of brief uh, we will do uh, intense discussion in you know in part two as well regarding the different uh, types of ftd model numbers and all but in part one as i've told you in this particular part one of this particular course we are doing a kind of a quick session of the discussions so that you guys can uh, learn the concept very very quickly and uh, adapt to the uh, ftd's uh, concept and do some deployment and you know start working as soon as possible yeah that's how my mindset is so we are here to understand something called as overview of your ftd of cisco ftd so before we discuss that let's say that we have got a simple scenario which is like you know i've got a let us say a firewall this is my firewall let's say it might be our plain and old asa firewall now asa is running from let's say from long long years it's around for 20 years or more than that right um nowadays you know uh palo alto checkpoint 48 um those firewalls has been uh categorized as the industry leaders because they're all next gen firewalls right now similar to that in the gartner chart even ftd uh is in the you know leadership uh role or is in challenger roles right in that particular domain so uh even ftd is right now called as a next gen firewall right now let's say i'm working with a legacy asa firewall so what happens is you know i have got this is my say internet okay and uh, let's say i have connected my <clears throat> interface say interface number whatever it is one uh, which is pointing towards the world of internet and i'll normally represent this as an outside interface and in case of ftd this will be called as the outside zone likewise let's say i've got some other interface which connects to a LAN segment so interface number two and this is facing to my you know inside port or say inside zone and so i've got interface number three that is connected to you know another segment where i'm keeping my companies 
uh, public facing web servers. So I have got here, say, some four web servers. Say one of them is the company servers I'm mean, using. One of them is a web server, just running the web services. One of them might be an FTP server. One of them could be a DNS server. Another would be a mail server, right? Now, let's say that, you know, there is some user who is trying to come in from outside and wants to access my, you know, uh, the, the DMZ servers. And let's say this zone is basically the DMZ, right? So now there is a user who wants to you know, send its packet from outside and tries to, you know, enter the DMZ and access the DMZ server. Now, what happens is, um, We'll talk about packet flow and all those things. You know, how does uh, a packet, when it enters the firewall, you know, what does the firewall do and all those expect? We'll discuss those things down the line. But let's say we have got a security policy, which is configured in the firewall, and it says that, hey, you are allowed to access from outside to the DMZ. Let's say we've got a policy which allows that particular traffic, right? In this case, what happens is, you know, on a, on a regular concepts, you know, you will have something called as the, ASA firewall will normally go and check your layer three and layer four contents of your packet, right? So a packet has got contents all the way from, you know, layer one to layer seven, but uh, a firewall, legacy firewall like ASA could check your layer three and layer four contents, right? So it will normally check your IP addresses, basically source IP, destination IP, and port numbers, which is basically based on TCP or UDP port numbers. So if your security policy says that, hey, you know, uh, this particular source IP X is trying to go to this particular DMC IP Y, having a port number, say whatever, random 1234, trying to hit this web server on port 80, let's say it's trying to access this particular web server on port 80, and we have got a security policy which says you are allowed to do that. If it is allowed, now what happens is that's it. I mean, the firewall, looks for l3 l4 inspection does that l3 l4 inspection of the ip and the port if the policy says it is allowed the firewall allows a particular packet to get inside and get access to the the user will get access to the you know the web server right and uh, since the firewall the asa firewall is stateful in nature what happens is you know it maintains the state information so automatically the return connection is automatically allowed right so <clears throat> that's how it is now the point is you know uh, since asa is not considered to be an action firewall the point is you know uh, there could be a lot of anomalies uh, there could be a lot of you know uh, payload check which is skipped right because your data contains a lot of information right so basically you have your uh, layer 2 information you'll have layer 3 information your layer 4 information as well as at layer seven, basically you have the application, you know, uh, protocols, which has created this particular data, right? Now the whole idea is the entire thing is called as payload, by the way. So uh, in the older days, what used to happen is you have to attach a device, which is called as along with firewall, you used to attach one uh, beautiful device called as a IPS. Right, so right between the you know the company servers and the firewall, you insert a device called as a IPS device. IPS stands for Intrusion Prevention System. So one interface of this IPS box will go and connect to the firewall. Another interface will normally go and connect to the switch. That switch will now will go and talk to the you know the servers of your company. The job of this IPS is to do something called as you know signature detection. The function of this IPS device is to do something called as signature detection. So what does it mean is, so every uh, traffic, when it is trying to enter your you know, network, right? So enter your destination. So this traffic is kind of a you know, web traffic, right? Which is trying to reach your web server. So this is going to have at application level, say the signature is HTTP signature right now since your firewall is only checking your layer 3 and layer 4 contents not that layer 7 contents but an ips job is to check the layer 7 application signature contents it is going to maintain something called as a database this ips maintains a db so on the db uh, it normally knows what could be a valid signature pattern 
for HTTP or the well-known you know uh, application protocols right so it should know what is the valid pattern in the database the IPS database it knows what should be the valid pattern of those layer 7 application protocol signatures now if you know some attackers are trying to send a web server based packet from outside to this particular web server and the signature is not matching with this valid pattern that is present in the DB then this particular signature can be called as as a as a anomaly you know detection right in this case if there is some sort of anomaly which is found in this case you know this IPS could take an action like it can drop this particular packet or it can alert the administrator that I'm finding some sort of signature anomalies here and this packet could be either alerted or could be dropped based on how you configure it right uh, one of the another type of common attacks that can happen uh, is called as a ping attack right a ping attack so in case of ping attack what happens is it's kind of a we call this as a reconnaissance attack right you can reconnaissance attack means where you know by using this ping being uh, traffic which is basically icmp traffic the outside users uh, normally tries to gather the inside or the corporate you know users information basically the ip addresses right so they try to ping um, randomly uh, the ip addresses and if some ips gives you a reply then you know they can come to know regarding this ip's existence okay so generally rec recognizance attack uh, might in some point of time might not be detected sometimes it can be can be found out uh, but but if you see that you know there is some attacks which is happening based on ping which is kind of the packets are getting fragmented right where let us say the ping packets are not more than you know 60 bytes or 50 bytes based on the operating system right but if you see that you are trying to receive a ping packet which is more than you know 1500 bytes which is 1500 bytes you can Think like this packet is getting you know fragmented right and when the ips receives this particular ping packet and it sees that the size of the ping packet is kind of fragmented then it is going to match against the database and it will find that here there is an anomaly because i'm finding the signature of a regular uh, ping versus the signature of this ping that i'm receiving is not the same it is different so it's a pattern of a well-known attack right we normally call that the signature is manage, maintaining a pattern or found out a pattern of a well-known attack right so the whole idea is you know how do you prevent it how do you stop it your regular asa can only go and check your layer 3 and layer 4 inspection so if the traffic is entering from uh, some source ip uh, say you allow the traffic from any source ip to hit the destination ip on port number 80 so if that matches you are allowed but what if that particular packet itself contains you know uh, anomalies it contains you know wrong information in the payload right the application signatures are you know forged right so the whole idea is the ips does this particular job for you 